Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Jim Sonis, once again of FanDuel, who's here to help me continue to break down week three from a DFS perspective. What's happening, Jim? I am all good, Greg, because this slate has good value. A lot of times we have value plays that are palatable, but I think on this slate we actually have good value, and I love having that. I love having safety in my value plays, so I am fantastic. How are you? I'm doing great, man. I'm excited for the annual Titans Jags Thursday night classic tonight. So things are things are going well. I'm excited to build my DFS lineup. But I need some value plays. Can you help me out? Absolutely. I can uh, I'll be happy here, but also we can't overlook my boy Marcus Mariota on a national stage. What could go wrong? This has Corey Davis Ofer written all over it. <laughs> Let's begin at the quarterback spot for this Sunday, though, and we begin with the Indianapolis Colts, Jacoby Brissett. I've been trying to figure out where I rank Brissett after the first two weeks, like what kind of crew he's in when it comes to the quarterbacks. Last week, uh, your favorite quarterback was Jimmy G. The week before, I believe it was Josh Allen from a value perspective. Now, you're going with Jacoby Brissett. Is that kind of like the same wavelength there, the same tier or so? Yeah, I think that when you look at him, he's priced there. He is $6,800 for this week, and I think that he has a lot of similar appeal to those guys where his offense is pretty good, and he's cheap, and he's in a good matchup, facing Atlanta for this week at home. And when looking at the Colts, I think that their first two matchups are not an indication of what to expect because they were on the road playing on grass against pretty good defenses with the Chargers and the Titans. So I didn't expect them to do a whole lot in those spots. And Brissett was still fine in those games, and actually his per her drop back numbers from an efficiency perspective are the same this year, pretty much as what Andrew Luck was last year on the road. I'm not saying that Brissett is, is luck because they're being very conservative with him. And obviously it's a major downgrade, but he has been okay. He's been passable. And now he goes home to play on that turf to, against the Atlanta Falcons. I think that that's a pretty good spot for Brissett. We also have to remember that this guy did run a decent amount back in 2017 when he was a starter. He had seven rush attempts last week. So a little bit of Josh Allen in him there from that perspective as well. And he gets T.Y. Hilton on this turf. I love Hilton this week at $7,400. I think that he could go nuts in this spot. But I think that Brissett makes a lot of sense too at $6,800. Kyler Murray is not that much more expensive at $72. I do like Murray more. But if I want to go with a pure value play, I think that Brissett has a good situation this week, a good matchup, and a great home uh, park to play into. So I think Brissett makes a lot of sense at $6,800. At $6,800, Jacoby Brissett is a fair uh, fair choice. It's going against a Falcons defense that has the ability to be lit up. Jacoby Brissett, he's solid. And at $6,800, like I said, solid's all you need. Get him in there. Sony Michelle once again returns to our value tier because... He's in a matchup where he should get the ball heavily. We saw it last week against Miami. This week, they're even bigger favorites against the Jets. It says Sonny Michel written all over it, unless he gets benched for fumbling late. What do you think, Jim? Yeah, I think that this kind of does go back to what you said, Greg, where we saw what to expect last week with this Patriots team in a, in a majorly positive game script. And they do have alternatives at running back in Rex Burkhead and James White. So there are concerns that White could get benched, but... I don't think that'll happen here. And I think that what we've seen from the Patriots so far is that they want to get Sonny Michelle the ball when they're ahead. And they should be ahead pretty much the entire game this week against the Jets. Michelle so far, 21 carries in week two. He had 15 carries in week one. And the Jets offense is going to set the Patriots up in really favorable positions to score touchdowns. We've seen the Patriots run the ball four times inside the five-yard line this year. They have not thrown any time inside the five. And two of those have been to Michelle. One was a touchdown. Tom Brady sneak. The other one was James Devlin. But I think that means that when they get in close, it'll be Michelle over guys like Burkhead and like James White, which bodes well for this week. But Michelle's not really the type of running back I tend to use on FanDuel. I do like guys who get passing down work, and Michelle has zero targets through the first two games. So this is a pretty major downside for him. But I just think this script this this script sets up way too well for Michelle. So doesn't fit my normal process, but huge home favorite against a team that is starting Luke Falk as their quarterback. It's kind of the ideal spot for Michelle. So at least for this week, I'll go back here, see what happens. I think $6,800 is a pretty fair price to pay. Absolutely. Going back to the well when you know what you're getting. That's the whole deal when it comes to the Patriots. If you can figure out this offense and kind of figure out the game plan, you're going to hit gold. And I think Sony Michelle against the Jets this week is just that. Gold, especially at $6,800. Another running back you like this week, 
Well, Frank's been all over him. It's Frank Gore. The renaissance continues. We don't know about Devin Singletary, but we do know Frank Gore got a ton of work last week against the Giants. Seven days later, it's expected to be more of the same against the Bengals. Frank Gore. How much is too much Frank Gore this week? Uh, probably just a little bit, you know, anything is too much in general with Frank Gore, but I think that he does make sense for this week at $5,700 against the Bengals. You said it, Greg. We saw this last week where even before Devin Singletary got hurt, Frank Gore was getting a lot of work. I think he had 12 carries compared to five for Singletary at the time that Singletary got hurt. And the time when Singletary scored that touchdown, Gore was getting checked for a concussion, wound up being fine. So even when Singletary was healthy, they were using Frank Gore. I would expect he DJ Yeldon to get work in this offense if Singletary misses, but it's not going to cut into the role that Frank Gore has. And I would bet that the Bengals or the, the Bills get a lead early this week against the Bengals and that bad defense. We saw the 49ers blow up on the road against the Bengals last week, and now the Bills are home favorites with an elite defense. I think you could stack Frank Gore with that Bills defense as well. 19 carries to go with two targets for Frank Gore last week. I would expect a pretty similar workload here in positive game script against this Bengals defense. So I think that we'll see good volume here for Frank Gore. He's only $5,700, so I'm not going to go very hard at him, which is kind of what you were alluding to there before. I think that I would rather spend up at running back in general for guys like David Johnson, Austin Eckler, uh, you know, Zeke Elliott and guys like that, and Dalvin Cook. But I think that when I do want to spend down, Frank Gore's probably the only running back that I want who carries a salary below $6,500. So if I want to go way down at running back in the few times I do decide to do so, it will be with Frank Gore. It's not pretty, it's not sexy, it's, it's not even fun, but Frank Gore at under $6,000 is going to lead this Buffalo Bills backfield in carries. And if they can get to that positive game script, as we saw last week against the Giants, Gore's going to have fantasy value. I know people have spent a lot of money on the waiver wire putting in Frank Gore, but I have to ask this from a season-long perspective, Jim. Would you rather play Frank Gore or James White this week? Frank Gore. Uh, I think that the game script just sets up so much better for him. James White's workload, honestly, has been perturbing if that's the word I could use here and it's not a script for the Patriots likely will be throwing the ball all that much so I think it sets up better for both Rex Burkhead and Sony Michelle than it does for James White so I think it's less me being really into Frank Gore than it is me being anti James White at this point I do think that Gore is in a tremendous spot basically one of the few spots where I would use him so I'd go Frank Gore over James White and actually buy a fairly decent amount personally music to Frank's ears indeed Frank Gore, get him in there this week. Let's move on to the wide receivers here, Jim, and that goes and has us back in Arizona. And we talked about this yesterday, that it helps when you know where the ball is going. You're stacking Kyler Murray and Larry Fitzgerald, but you didn't want us to forget about Christian Kirk. How much Kirk do you have this week? The answer is far too much. I'm going to have a lot of Christian Kirk, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, but I'm going to have a lot of fits, too, because I think that he is the exact same salary, Kirk. They're both $5,900. But again, like you said, we know where the ball is going. Through the first two games, Christian Kirk has 20 targets overall. He's had six targets, at least 16 yards downfield, which is really good for a guy who is this cheap. He is getting overall targets. He is getting high leverage targets, and I like both of that. His snap rate did stay pretty steady last week, despite Michael Crabtree popping up uh, and playing last week. So I think that he is very safe here, despite the addition of Crabtree. I think that if anyone goes down, it'd probably be Demir Bird. So Fitz is safe at $5,900. So is Christian Kirk at 59 my problem is I have to pick out which Cardinals I want to use in cash because I can't go too hard at this team because you don't want to overextend yourself on one side. But all these guys are so cheap. I think that David Johnson's probably my favorite guy from a value perspective. But uh, Christian Kirk and Larry Fitz, both really good options, too. So overall, I just want a lot of Cardinals. And Christian Kirk definitely will be one of those guys as a super cheap receiver at $5,900. Christian Kirk at under $6,000, it makes too much sense. You know he's getting the ball. You know Larry Fitzgerald's getting the ball. You know what the stack is. Get the Cardinals in there against a the Panthers defense that is going to be vulnerable against his air raid offense. We'll see what Cliff Kingsbury has cooked up. But the Panthers are allowing all those yards and all those points to game manager Jameis Winston. It should be a good weekend for the Cardinals. Let's move on to a wide receiver that's now under $5,000. And that brings us to Nelson Aguilar. There's no Deshaun Jackson. There's no Alshon Jeffrey. There's probably no Dallas Goddard either. And when we saw all these guys leave on Sunday night, it was a Nelson Aguilar show. It's going to be that way this Sunday against the Lions, which means you need to have Aguilar in your lineup. This one, for me, is a must-play, Jim. 
Yeah, I 100% agree. For the reasons that you mentioned, you look at this team, they are going to be down a lot of relevant pass catchers. And we can debate J.J. Ortega-Whiteside. We can talk about Matt Collins as well. But, you know, with Nelson Aguilar is only $200 more expensive than those guys, why not just go Aguilar? Aguilar will be in the slot here because uh, we do want to avoid Darius Slay on the outside for Detroit. That is a good thing for Aguilar. And like you said, 11 targets last week. He has five deep targets through the first two games. So it's not just these short targets. It is also work down the field, which we do like for a guy who is this cheap at $4,800. And I think that the matchup is great here. I think that tying a value play to a guy as good as Carson Wentz is always attractive. So I want to go at Zach Ertz. He is $6,900. I think that he is also a tremendous player for this week, but among the wide receivers, I think that Nelson Aguilar's workload is just way too good to pass up. So I'm going to have a ton of Nelson Aguilar this week. I will mix in some J.J. Ortega Whiteside and some some uh, Mac Collins, but I think more often than not, we want to go with Nelson Aguilar here. Overall, just an offense that I want to attack with all the opportunity available, but I think that Zach Ertz and Nelson Aguilar are the two best ways to get there. Just being smart about this, right? Aguilar and Ertz are the guarantees in this offense. Arcega Whiteside and Mac Collins, certainly worth it in the tournament because if they pop, you'll win some money. But let's be smart, especially in cash games. Nelson Aguilar, a complete no-brainer, under $5,000 here this week. Finally, we get to the tight end position, and that brings us back to Detroit in this same game. It's TJ Hawkinson, who lit it up in week one. Not so much in week two. The value suppressed a little bit. Everyone went toward Hawk in week two. They got burned. You're assuming they won't do it again and with the thought of potentially getting burned again. Hawk, 5,500 here, Jim. Yeah, I think last week was kind of a trap spot for TJ Hawkinson because you look at that game, they were facing a team in the Chargers that runs a very slow offense. The overall play volume in that game was not going to be good pretty much no matter what happened. And that's exactly how we saw things transpire. Matthew Stafford, I think, through 30 times in that game. But now they're going on the road. They're facing the Philadelphia Eagles. And the Eagles, yes, they're banged up, but they're an NFC contender, a team that could go to the Super Bowl. And they're probably going to get ahead of this Detroit team, which means Detroit will have to throw, which leads to extra volume for TJ Hawkinson. Back in week one, he had nine targets there. Four of those targets were at least 16 yards downfield. And there aren't many tight ends who are available who get down downfield targets. Hawkinson was one of them. He still played a ton of snaps in week number two. So as people scurry away based on what happened in week number two, we can go back to Hawkinson here in an environment that is more pass friendly for Detroit. So I think that it does make a lot of sense to go back to Hawkinson here. He does have a low floor. So I think that for cash games, I want to try to find the money to get up to guys like Zach Ertz, like George Kittle, maybe even Travis Kelsey. I think they're better plays for cash game. But for tournaments, we're not going to see hardly anybody on TJ Hawkinson this week. And he does still have upside because he will get work down the field. So I think that Hawkinson makes a lot of sense here. If you decide that you want to go with Aguilar or run it back with someone on this Detroit team, Hawkinson would be the guy that I turn to first. I think that Kenny Galladay is in the same range there. Uh, but I think that Hawkinson filling that tight end spot at $5,500, a salary back down from 6000 last week. I think we can go back to him once again here in week three. TJ Hawkins seeing a fine tournament play, but as you said, you're going to want to go up and pay for Zach Ertz, Travis Kelsey, George Kittle, something along those lines. But hey, you want to take a shot on a guy with a low floor but a ceiling to potentially break out? We saw what that upside can be with TJ Hawkins in just a couple of weeks back. Take your shot here, especially at this price tag. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel. Hurry up, Jim. Best of luck this weekend, and enjoy the game tonight. Thank you, Greg. I very much will. We'll see how it goes. Who could not enjoy Jags versus Titans? But hopefully week three goes well for you, and we'll talk to you again next week. Absolutely. All the Derrick Henry tonight. We'll get some Marcus Mariota, and I'll root for that Corey Davis zero. Have a great night, everybody. Enjoy the game. I'll be joined by Game Marantz tomorrow as we break down his six best bets from this Sunday. Have a great, have a great night, and we'll see you then.